Hey guys, this is Walt Bayless. I'm so excited to have with me some really good friends, people that I've known for a long time, and two gentlemen that really identify the whole concept of domaining. Being able to pick up a www, a domain, and be able to turn that into real cash and real profits. In fact, these gentlemen are so well known on the net that if you look up the word domaining, you'll see their picture in Wikipedia. I'm just kidding with that. But these guys really know their stuff when it comes to domains. It's my unbelievable pleasure to introduce you to Gene Pemintel and Dan Nickerson. I've got both gentlemen on the line. Guys, thanks so much for joining me. Hey, well, thanks. Thank you. Good to see you Thank guys. You. Now, we're talking <laughs> domain names. Uh, Gene, I want to address the first question to you. Sure. Gene, I've known you in the domaining space for probably more than a decade. You was, yep. I think you know you registered the first www dot before Adam was given full back position for Jerusalem. How long have you been <laughs> right. buying domain names for? Oh, since uh, nineteen ninety six. So, yeah, it's been quite a while. Wow. How many do you own now? Oh, about three thousand. Wow. And, and that, that's that, that's relatively low compared to a lot of domainers. But I try to. There, there, there are different markets in domaining. There, there's the low end, you know, quick flips, and there's the high end where you invest in a domain and hold it for a long time. Yeah. I, do the quick fl- I do the quick flips. So I'm always turning that list over. And there's 3,000, but I just keep flipping it over with uh, new names. So how many do you buy and sell in a week, in a month? Oh, gee, I probably buy a couple of hundred a week. Wow, fantastic. And, and so that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the turnaround rate. Yeah. And, and are you turning over those same couple of hundred a, a week? Right. And most of those are very low numbers. But what you do is that that creates the cash flow. Yeah, you sure. know, a lot of the low, low number sales. But, you know, $200, $300. But within those, you'll always find a few gems that'll sell for $5,000, $10,000. So wow. you just keep it going and you find those gems as you go. And, and what's, what's the, like... The majority are going to be those quick ones. Uh, what would you say is, the, is the, the lowest margin that you would take on any, or any of those quick flips? Oh, I mean, the lowest would be maybe $50, $50 or $100 if I just want to move it out, you know? Wow. Uh, because I'm only paying 10 bucks for the thing. So why not just move it, use that money to reinvest in a better, uh, better name? Wow, fantastic. And then as you're saying, some of the bigger ones, you know, you can move up to 500 or 1,000 even on a quick turnaround. Right. What's, give, give me a brag moment, man. What's, what's the best buy and sell story you've had so far? Oh, well, this is an interesting one. <laughs> Way back, oh, I, I forget how many years, but I, there was a domain that sold in the marketplace that I noticed. Um, it's called, it was uh, triplecreditreport.com. And the credit report industry is a big money industry. So that sold for, I, I think it was a quarter of a million dollars. So what I did is I said, well, let me check that out. And I added an S to the end of that name, triple credit reports. So I made it plural. And uh, I quick flipped that for twenty four thousand. Wow! <laughs> the same owner? I, I paid t- no. It was a different owner. I, I paid ten dollars for it on that day, and I sold it uh, the following month for twenty four thousand. That's not a bad uh, thirty days worth of work, man. That is right. an incredible turnover. That's amazing. Just, just, so just adding an S. So that doesn't that doesn't happen all the time. Um, and you mentioned no. you've got about three thousand domains in your in your your hold right now. Do you have any that you've held for years that you're just thinking there's no way I'm going to let this go? Uh, well, yeah, there are a few, uh, probably a couple of dozen of those, and I prefer not to disclose what they no, are. No, 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 don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't tell us the domain, don't tell us the URLs, but you, you do have those, uh, those few there. Um, Dan, I want to flick over to you because I don't want Dan sitting in the dark and, and, and feeling like a much older <laughs> like, Dan, dark what about yourself, dark man? Office. My dark office, it's daytime. I usually it's nice, it's nice. It's, it's, it's wow. daytime in Australia, so it's a, I thank you guys for joining me. Dan, how many do you own yourself, man? Not, a, not as many as Gene. I'm not an active demander. I have about 140 that I own. So Nice. And you have a different strategy, right? Like, I mean, Dan, I've known you as a, as a programmer, as a coder, somebody that's specialized, especially in the WordPress world. You've, you are more uh, buy it, build it, and sell it rather than buy it and flip it, right? Yeah. Th- I've actually only sold uh, probably 15 or 20 domains. Uh, okay. So I'm not an active seller, but, I, but some of the ones I've sold have sold for quite a few, quite a bit of $3. So. Give me the brag. Well, you know, it's funny because I worked with uh, with Joel Kahn on a lot of stuff, so we had some we had some big deals there. So I, I will say that we had we had one that was seven hundred thousand dollars, which is wow, <laughs> name that's amazing. And then, I, and then I had another one which was a quarter million dollars, um, and those are just companies that we built up and bought, but not to not to give names. I'll, I'll give you one example though of a site that I I still own, but I sold it for fifty k, and that's it's flagstore.com. And so it's a long story. It was the webmaster for the people that owned it. And long story short, it passed down to me. Kind of partners with someone in the family. But 
I had someone that I thought I'd, I thought it would sell, you know, a reasonable amount of money. It's a good name, but I found somebody that wanted to buy it, but they wanted to do a different contract. They wanted to lease it for a while. So they're paying me a leasing fee right now with a contract to pay, to buy it for 50, 50 grand. Wow. And if they don't fill their payments, then they get it back. So you can do things, you know, be flexible with people. If you find a good buyer, you know, I'm happy to take 250 bottles a month to, to rent the domain. Basically. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you, and actually, that's a, that's a model I just wanted to concentrate on just for a second. Do you, do you have a few domains that are rented out right now, Dan? I don't. I only have, I have, well, I have that one. And I actually know it's not, I have a couple more people and I'll tell you another different model that I have. Some people are complete newbies. Yeah. And so they just want a website up quick. They don't even want to bother registering it. Yeah. So for a few people I've said, you know, cause I can make a website in five minutes. So yeah. I say, tell you what, pay me nine ninety five a month. I'll register the domain name, host it on my server. Yep. And um, you just pay me and they pay me indefinitely. And I've had nice. people pay me for 20 years. Fantastic. Um, you know, I've had I love people, it. It was 1998. I started my web hosting company, and there's still people that pay me. You know, that's that hosting. is just brilliant. I absolutely love it. So, I haven't heard um, from decade, so Gene, still- let me bounce back to Gene for just for a second. Gene, do you have any in that rental space? Do you have that as an active uh, method of making money? I do, but what my uh, goal in domaining is to avoid <laughs> avoid uh, customer contact. So mm-hmm. I don't like I don't like to handhold it. I don't like to work with customers and spend my time doing that. But yep. I do have a lot, you know, domain rentals that I do and I try to systemize it so I can easily just register a domain, create a, a good landing page for a customer, a lead generation type site and rent that out. Nice. And so what, what kind of rentals do you get for that basic situation? Just like register a domain, put a basic yeah. HTML template and, and rent it back out to somebody. Right. Usually like forty nine ninety five. It's really, ch- really cheap, but a month. It, adds, it adds up when you have a lot of those out there. Wow, Dan, like even if you just think about that $9 purchase, forty nine ninety five rental, right? right? Do that 10 times, you're making 500 a month off a $50 investment. I mean, right. that's just, that's incredible. I love it. So um, do you guys, uh, um, let me stay with you just for a second, Gene. Do you have a template of what you look for when you're looking at domains? Do you, do you, do you look at a whole scope and say yes, no very quickly because you, you have a very distinct type of domain that you buy? Yeah, when I look at a list now, it's it's almost it's so second nature. But the most important thing is that it's a dot com. Okay, uh, there are a lot of different types of domains out there, and they can sell and they can be good. But I'm trying to do it as efficiently and quickly as possible, and get mm. the most money out of my domains as possible. Dot mm. com is where it's at. That's what people want to buy, and that's what's easiest to sell. So yeah. I, I just focus on dot com. That doesn't mean that the other ones won't sell, but I like to focus on dot com because that's where my time is best invested. Yeah. Do you have a, do you have a, a vertical that you chase down uh, or do you just like buy whatever you see? Do you search and, and you know, what's your process for, for investing in these new debates? Um, well, I, I scan the, uh, you know, expired domain lists every day and that is a gold mine of uh, domain information. Mm. Um, that's why I started the program named where I produce a list almost every day and I send those, those out to subscribers. But uh, they can be in any di- type of niche that produces money. You know, it could be, uh, you know, I don't want to rent a, I don't want to uh, register a domain that's for a hot dog stand. I want to mm. do it for lawyers, doctors, uh, plumbers, landscapers, yep. that kind of thing. Yeah, Mostly right. local business is what I like to focus on. But there are so many other online businesses that you can uh, tackle too. So many different yeah. niches. And I mean, there's so many, like the, every, every industry that you can think of, there's, there's domains in that kind of space, which is cool. Right. Actually, which brings me to a question that a lot of people might have in their mind when they're thinking about domain names and, and getting into this as a, as a way of making money. What do you say to somebody that says all the good names are already gone? <laughs> I laugh. I mean, that, that, that is the, the excuse I've heard for 15 years. And that's one of the reasons I created Name Snagger because I prove it to them by giving them a list of three to 400 domain names every day that are valued between 500 and a thousand dollars. Every one of those they can register. They're free to register every day. I can come up with that list of names and it, yeah. I never, never run out. Just and there was some, sorry, I, Dan, I, go I, for a minute. Quick example in Gene's list the other day. I saw, I saw your marketing expert.com. Wow. And I'm thinking, I go, that's, I mean, how many people consider themselves a marketing expert? And so the first thing I do is go to Google and I type in, in, in quotes, your marketing expert. And I don't know how many, I can't remember the results now, but it was in the tens of thousands of results for that term, for that phrase, your marketing wow. expert. And the domain was available. Wow. And I, every day I see stuff, I'm like, oh my God, that domain's available, you know? You know, last month I picked one of the names off the list. Uh, it, it's a, it was a small town in Texas. He, he, Lotes, I guess it's called. 
H E L O T E S. Uh, tech, uh, so it's that tx.com. I registered it because it's, uh, it, you know, I figured some business in that town would want that. And sure enough, about uh, two months later, I sold it for $400 without even yeah. trying. That's fantastic. There were a lot of those names on the list every single day. Yeah. How do you go about, how do you go about the flip? Like, so I was talking to, uh, we've got another interview as part of our series here with the domaining uh, with uh, Jeff Staniforth, who I know is a, um, a subscriber to Eugene and, and has learned a lot from you. Um, and Jeff was saying that he, he has a portfolio that he's built up like a very um, small number. I think he was talking a few hundred domains, but he, he's focused on the growth of those. So, you know, picking something right. up 10 years ago that now is worth, uh, millions. And he was saying that his portfolio, if somebody wanted to pay him, he'd, he'd, he wouldn't take anything less than 6 million, I think he was saying. Wow. Um, so, which is pretty cool. But he was starting to focus now on selling those to fund his retirement. And he was uh, looking for a way to uh, contact people in a vertical and offer them for sale. So let's, let's take the example. We've got a, a, a domain, which is xyzrealty.com. Um, and that X, Y, Z might be a location. So do you have a method of reaching the people that might be interested in those domains, Gots? You know, I, I keep it simple and too many people complicate it. It's simply a matter of researching in Google to see what businesses are using those keywords in the domain. Or like you say, if it's a town with realty or real, real estate, just look up to see who's, use, who's a real, real estate agent in that town and just contact them by email. It's not a big deal and say, look, I have this domain and I'm offering it to every real estate agent in your town. If you want it, just place a bid or, or, you know, make me an offer. Yeah. Nice. Keep it simple. And you know, a lot of times you don't get a response, but the ones that do they'll, that's where the money is. Wow. And do you, um, sorry, Dan, I'm going to come back to you in just a second, but Gene, you, you're saying, do you, sending that out, make an offer. Do you have your own, sales platform or are you using a system like flipper like what's your what's your go-to for for making the sales well I, I just use direct email in most cases but if i want to do it passively i'll use cedo.com mm -hmm. after nick after nick.com is really good i have the best uh, success with them wow uh, uh flipper i don't use much because they caught they charge you a fee up front for each listing yeah Plus it only stays up there for a couple of weeks uh, whereas Cedo and Afternick, you can list as many domains as you want for free and you only pay so, one that the sale is made. It's also, yeah, a right. big it's also a big process to submit on Flippa. You know, to me, yeah. it's time. It's like, I don't want to take all this time to fill out all this listing information. I just want right. to you know, keep it simple. Put up the domain and, and, yeah. uh, and take the bid. Yeah, absolutely. Dan, um, do, you, do you have your own criteria now? As you're looking at as a, as a domainer, do you have a criteria that you work with? You know, I'm, I'm kind of like, I, you know, I don't, like I said, I'm not a big buyer, as you can tell by my slower, smaller inventory, but I will look for stuff that might help with my brand or with a client or, or things like that. So I, I do have a few clients that I work for, and, and so I'm always looking for domains in their niche. And I, by the way, I apologize for a train going by up here. <laughs> um, but I, I will look for, I'll give you an example of one that was on Jane's list the other day was waterfrontpropertysales.com. Wow. It was available. I'm like, wow, it's great. Now I researched that and found out that it's been for sale for a long time and there was nothing on it. You could look it up. Um, but I see, if I see a real estate related one, I tend to like it because I always think real estate agents are looking for a good name that they can be known for. And of course, if you, if you Google waterfront property real estate agent, you'd find thousands of people that want to specialize in that. Mm. You know, so that would be an easy kind of flip. Um, but I, I may basically look for, I look for business names. I look for business name ideas. So if I see a good name, a good name for a company, I'm mm. thinking how many, how often, how much time will we spend in our life looking for a, a name for a new company that we're creating, yeah. right? Yeah. A lot. A lot. So if I see something like that, I, I will pick it up. Uh, so real estate and business names that might be useful or product names might be useful. Nice. Now, what's, what's really interesting is when they, when people contact you out of the blue and say, Hey, I see you own such and such a domain. I'll give you whatever money for it. Uh, I, I registered one called Fiji wedding photographer.com. And not long after I registered it, somebody approached me and says, I'll give you $1,000 for that. And so I sold it. Fantastic. How much did it cost you to register? $10. <laughs> I love it. I, had, um, I, I bought a, a domain um, oh, six, seven years ago. And it, it, something I was trying to put together like a, a, a crazy little a PDF thing. And I think it was called Kylie'sCooking.com. And now that's a pretty limited domain, right? It's right. only Kylie that's going to buy that. Right. But I, I was trying to do like a, some, uh, I was trying to show off that you could create a, an ebook and make sales and put it up on ClickBank and whatever. So I, I saw Kylie's cooking.com and I thought, yep, that's, that's my go. I bought it $10, whatever. 
And this was my plan to, to, to show off how you could make an ebook and get it up onto ClickBank and make sales, right? That was kind of what I was demonstrating. And so I bought Kylie's Cooking and um, it would be 24, 48 hours later, something like that, like crazy short amount of time. I hadn't even put the first words on paper for the ebook that I was trying to create. Yeah. And uh, a lady named Kylie <laughs> emails me and says, you just bought my domain name. Oh, I man. let it slip. Oh. Oh. And I've been running Kylie's Cooking blog site for the last 10 years. Uh. And, you know, I, I feel bad, right? But I own the domain. And I'm like, I, I, I said, oh, um, uh, thanks for reaching out, Kylie. What are your plans? Like, I didn't make an offer. I didn't say, well, you can, you know, whatever. And she said, I'll give you $1,000 to buy it back off you. Oh, oh wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I didn't, I, I can create Charlie's cooking. I don't care, right? I just like, <laughs> right. It's no problem at all, but yeah, the amazing so stories. Fun. Very, very yeah. cool. Well, guys, what are some of the mistakes that people make when they're looking to get into domain names? Um, one of the mistakes is they, they'll register domain names that just sound good to them. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of domains that sound great, but they won't sell. There's not a market for them. Mm -hmm. You have to re do your research first and see what markets you want to go into and find domain names that will appeal to those specific markets. Uh, and what people, you know, look for... Uh, keyword rich domains are good or location domains, but make sure there is an audience that you can approach to that would be able to use that domain for something. Don't just register a domain because it sounds good. Make yeah. sure there are people, make, make sure there are prospects for it. Yeah, right. I mean, there's no point having a, um, a yeah, Kylie's cooking, for example, unless you've got a, a, right. a specific plan for it. Yeah, it makes sense. What about yourself, Dan? What, what are some of the mistakes you've seen people make? Um, well, I was going to, I was going to say the same thing as Gene, but, but not getting dot com. So they'll get like dot info and things like that. Is right. there any but, value in those guys? Is there any value in it? Dot biz, dot org, dot net, dot io, dot whatever. Th there's plenty of value in them, but it would take me 10 times as long and 10 times more effort to try to sell that than it would to sell a dot com. Yeah. So why do it? You know? Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, unless you know the the, the, the uh, exception to that rule, of course, is if that uh, it dot info has a lot of traffic going to it, or if it has a lot of backlinks that's pre pre established, then it's worth registering for the traffic and for the backlinks. Right. Actually, that's a good in, that's a good question, Gene. Can I stay on that for a second because it's something that I'm I'm really want to make sure of that we that we cover off with people. Backlinks and mm. traffic. How do they? continue on with a domain that changes hands? Um, well, the backlinks are there regardless of who owns it. Yep. You know, once the backlink is out there, it's out there. Uh, traffic can change as soon, you know, I mean, it depends on how the time span between it, you know, the, it, you know, it could be five months, be, you know, between ownerships and then you lose a lot of that traffic. But if it's a, a quick, you know, it becomes available and you register it right away and you put up some content to keep that traffic coming, you can capture a lot of that traffic. Do you, do you need to have something in place not to lose those backlinks, man? Because I think, like, th again, this is something that I'm really focused on. Of course, I've got the, the domaining tool, which we've got coming through. Um, and I, one of the metrics that we look at is those backlinks. And we want to make sure that we preserve those. So if you can buy it and get content on there and, you know, make sure that any, any links are redirecting and that kind of stuff, will those backlinks gen generally stay in place? They, they will quite often fade away over time. Over time. Yeah, but if you want to keep those, if you have good backlinks and you want to keep them established, create a page, make sure the backlink goes, you know, a lot of the backlinks go to specific pages on the yep. domain, yep. like, you know, whatever.com slash, you know, party or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to make sure that those backlinks, you create pages that match those backlinks that are out there. Yeah. And so one of the one of the plugins that we've got with the PRH system does exactly that. So you just put yeah. it in and it literally 301 redirects any yeah. incoming links to a to a certain thing. So that's right. pretty cool. So um, that. what about the traffic? Like as we're looking to buy a domain, you know, and, and we see that that particular domain has had an average of 100 visitors a month for the last three years or whatever. Um, does that traffic typically come from backlinks in your experience? You know, you want to answer that, Dan? You go well, for I was going to say, I was going to say, typically, yeah, it does. It does come from backlinks, and I will I'll say, add to add to that conversation was back. You know, broken link checkers have really only become popular in the last five or six years or so. Yeah, I think. And so before that time, they would just stay forever. And and I I uh, um, hold on one second. And I had a, um, I once had a site that was four hundred thousand backlinks. Um, it was a PR eight site back in the day, and wow, I, I miss the days when I could just link any product and 
Uh, <laughs> I used to be able to rank a site on page one on Google for any key term. Just yeah, just, yeah, just term. throw 5,000 backlinks at it those, and those watch it good break old, Those were the good old days. Um, but I, I also still will see, on, I'll see backlinks on these sites that are 15, 20 years old because they're just abandoned by people. So wow. the services are still live, but they're abandoned. But, but long story short, broken link checkers, webmasters have gotten better. There's much better tools to track backlinks. So they do slowly come off. But one of the first things I do whenever I get a new domain and is, is essentially go look at the go look at the traffic. Where's it coming from? I, I will load into the stats. I'll look for broken links and I'll either set up a quick landing page or I'll do it like you said, 301 redirect that traffic. Mm. So it won't throw back a 404 to um, to the, the person. The link trackers, trackers, yeah, absolutely. One of the and things so, that I've noticed as well, um, just recently looking at domains is not just backlinks in terms of anchor links from other sites coming through. But now there's a lot of um, ah, focus is maybe the wrong word, but there's a, there's, a, there's a feeling that I have with social backlinks. So links from Facebook, links from Twitter, links from, you know, um, the, the social platforms, LinkedIn, for example, are, are being able to be discovered and focused well on these domains. Have you guys found that at all? I, I, that definitely happens. I'm not a traffic expert, so I don't know the effectiveness of social media backlinks as opposed to other you know types of backlinks. But um, that's not my focus when I buy domains. I, I register and try to flip them quickly. So yeah. I don't. I'm not a, a good traffic person. But yeah, that happens. Yeah, I, I will say. I will say one model that if I had more time and focus that a lot of see guys doing is. And I don't know how well it works today, but a, a few years ago it was a very powerful technique. And that is guys would basically buy domains that had backlinks and traffic and they would 301 redirect it to another domain. Absolutely. So in fact, there's a whole company that does just that. And I think it's called, right. I think it's called redirects.com or something like that. And, you know, they have an, an inventory of a few million domains with, with right. these backlinks and you can rent off them and they redirect the traffic to you and all that kind of stuff. I mean. But also just for the juice of it, you know, just the, the ranking juice of it will help. But it's just, you, know, you never know. You can't trust the business to that model anymore. Yeah, right. Because don't know what's going to happen with the next Google algorithm. algorithm. Yeah, yeah, it also it also depends if you're if you're using the backlinks to establish your own uh, website that your company website and you want a good credibility to that website as opposed to just putting out websites to flip and sell or you know do something else with. Yeah, uh, that, that you don't care if it falls off. You know, the yeah. face of the earth. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. So it, it depends on your goals. Yeah, I will tell uh, you. I, I will tell you a quick uh, a quick funny story. And, and one of the best domains I bought is that I'm a fan of Twitter Bootstrap. Yep. You know, but I always type in bootstrap as bootstrap. Bootstrap. Because <laughs> the word boo, you know, and strap. It's just, there's two words there. So I just typed that in. <laughs> so I said, you know what? I'm making this mistake so often. Bootstrap bootstrap.com is available. So I registered it. Guess how much traffic it gets? Get out of it. It gets 1,500 unique visitors a month. Oh, my time. Lord. <laughs> and so now guys have actually linked back to it by accident because they're trying to type in bootstrap, which is even a real bootstrap domain. Uh, and they type in bootstrap instead of the, for the backlink. So it has backlinks to the typo. Dan, why aren't you renting that out, man? Well, no, I have, I actually just have a, I, I, I have affiliate links on there and I have uh, other stuff on there. So I basically made it a resource site for Twitter bootstrap. But the other good thing, the one thing to mention on a typo domain like that, is that S comes before T. So if they've gone to my site before and they go to type in bootstrap, bootstrap comes up first. Right. It, it actually has that in their, in their search history. Right. So a lot of this traffic is repeat visitors that come back because it's already in their browser history and so forth. And, I love but it. Typo, typo domains are, <coughs> you never know. Yeah. Right. Have you ever, have you guys, have you ever come across a, um, a copyright issue? Well, not copyright, but trademark. Trademark. Sorry. Yeah. That's probably a better term. Like, right. you know, um, uh, I owned, I, before Uber was a thing, I owned uh, uh, Uber, oh, I can't even remember it now, but it was like uh, Uber Panic or something like that, uberpanic.com. Um, yeah. And it, that was one of the mistakes I made. I bought it because it sounded good, right? Yeah. Um, but, but then that's when- you're real condition now when you're in the back of an Uber. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Uber. That's like, you know, Uber Panic. Um, the, uh, when Uber kicked in, they sent me a, you know, trademark whatever and i said look guys the domain doesn't mean much to me flick me a hundred bucks and it's yours and they're yeah. like no um here's what we're gonna do if you don't shut it down 
wheel yeah. and I went okay well <laughs> it's not worth the hassle like see you later it's but, funny you say that because for the first time in my life yes last night I had to send it to somebody because of iFart so I created the <laughs> iFart app we have iFart mobile and I never registered iFart.app and some guy created an app at iFart.app don't go there we're iFart mobile that's the best <laughs> stay on it. stay on the interview guys don't go there I know it's fun so, long story short um I sent the guy I said look and I, I tried to be funny about it nice about it I just said look it's a registered trademark you know we own it for a computer mobile device that plays fart sounds uh please take your please take the site down and of course his email bounced so <laughs> so anyhow i'm just saying for the first you mentioned that and for the first time ever i had to send a notice to somebody because they're infringing on my trademark so i think it's i think safe like for people that are watching this i think the safest thing to do is to steer away from that stuff right like don't try oh, and, you know I, typos yeah. sure typos absolutely but it's don't use a brand google. name in a url because you, you're gonna and, lose and it. google it i mean people said i've had people say, oh, i never knew there was an app called ifart it's like have you googled it just yeah. google it <laughs> Just yeah. Google is your Google's your best research friend. Um, right. Guys, what would you do right now? Like knowing what you know, and Dan, I want to point this question to you first, and then I'll come back to you, Gina, and ask the same thing. Knowing what you know now, you wake up tomorrow morning and you've lost your portfolio. You have to start from scratch. Do you think you could build up within, let's say, a thirty to sixty day period, a valuable domain portfolio again? Well, I think I'd start flipping pizzas or something. I'd get on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think I could see the one thing that comes down to guys like me, I have, my focus is horrible. Uh, if I was to focus on one thing and that would be, for example, I can make a domain that someone would charge 3000 bucks for, I can make a domain like that in an hour. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yep. So if I was going to start over, I would actually build a site out. So I would register a domain name and I would build a decent site with decent content. And I would try to get in that business where I would either just, sell the domain, rent the domain, or I'll make, I'll make websites for you. So if I started over from scratch, I would start with that mindset, find a good domain name, build an actual nice looking site on it, reach out, try to sell it. And then say, then I would, then I would go this way. I'd say, you can buy the domain, <clears throat> excuse me, or you can rent the domain, or I will give you the domain if you go on a contract with me for server maintenance. And so $50, like Gene said, $50 a month, I will host, maintain, update your website for you. Yep. and be available for support issues. Now, and for anybody that doesn't have the skills, like, I mean, you can have yeah. a, a, an outsourcer fill in a, a, right. a website template, you know, as, as Dan was saying, and, and build that out. So your model, Dan, if you, if you had to start again, your model would be buy good domains, build them out, and then either on sell them for a, for a premium or rent them out to that business or that niche. Right. That would be your strategy. Yeah, and I'll give you an example too. I, I registered another domain. I, I think it's Elegant Hair Design. I, I just saw it on Gene's list, Elegant Hair Design. And the first thing I did was go to Google, typed it in, and I found a dozen businesses in this country with the name Elegant Hair Design. Yeah. You know, and they didn't have the website. So, you know, so I would start with a model like that. I would look in Google, I would get on the phone, and I'd say, hey, no, save your business. I own the domain name. You can see there's a website up for a hair company right now. If you want fifty dollars a month, it's yours, or you or a thousand dollars, you know, you can have it. And I would just start with that. If I just did, if I get one domain a day, and I take a hour to make an hour or two to make a website, and just try to build up a portfolio that way. Fantastic, good strategy. That's How about yourself, Gene? If you have to stay focused, that would be tough for me. Uh, right. I'll, I'd say, I'll send you a daily email, mate, and make sure you're onto it. Gene, what about yourself, man? You wake up tomorrow, three thousand domains have been lost somehow. You know what you know. You know what your skills you have. What strategy would you take? to rebuild a valuable portfolio quickly? Well, number one, I'd hit the expiry domain lists. You know, uh, every day, almost 100,000 domains expire every day. And there are a lot of valuable domains in that list every single day. Mm. So there's the base. Um, I would look for domains that are business oriented. Um, they're the easiest prospects to find a buyer for, you know, like, um, you know, bostonplumber.com or, you know, um, you know, Dallas landscape, Dallas landscaper .com, that kind of domain, those are easy to sell. And yeah. you can just register those domains for $10. And like Dan said, get on the phone, say, Hey, I have this domain name. Do you want to rent it from me? Or you can buy it for $500. Uh, you do one of those a day and you're, you're making some good money. Yeah. You do it quickly. So how, how Gene, you are um, principally a domainer, like you have other uh, business interests and, and things as well, but you are principally a domainer. How right. much time per day do you spend on your principal domaining world? 
That's a good question. I mean, it changes every day, but uh, I spend a lot of time in this office. <laughs> yeah. uh, if, if, I if I were to try to boil it down to what I do for domaining, I would say five hours a day. Yeah, okay. All right. So it, it, it's a full-time gig for you. Mm -hmm. It's a full-time gig. And, and with that, I, I, I kind of want to ask this as a personal question. And feel free to skip past it if you, if you, if you don't want to answer it. But five hours a day, um, are you making high six figures, mid, low, over seven? Like where, what are you making from it in, in a year? Yeah, well, I, I, that's a question I've, I've been asked so many times. And I, 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 the only way I can answer that is I sell a lot of domains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those prices I've mentioned. I don't discuss my income, though. Yeah, okay, okay, cool, cool. That gives us an idea, though. So I just, like, I'm just trying to think from a, somebody who's listening in, you know, we can take the casual domain approach and we can buy a domain here and there. But you've mm -hmm. obviously, you have this as a profession. So it is, it's the time that you put well, into it at five hours been a day. My, it's been my full-time profession for 15 years. So There you go. Okay, cool. If I'm still and, with it, then it's worth something. Yeah. And Dan, I know that you have more of a, uh, a software development focus, even though you don't have focus. Um, so you're, you're more of that software side of things. How much time do you spend domaining, actually looking at domains and building out those sites? Not a lot. Um, you know, Gene's, Gene has gotten me back with the bug with name stagger. So he'll send the name stagger list and I'll look at it and I'll spend five minutes or so looking at domains and checking backlinks and, and things like that. And I don't spend a lot. I, I have, um, I have a lot of my own products, as you know, and I also um, have one client that I manage. He owns a bunch of different SaaS programs, so I manage those SaaS SaaS more. Mm. And so that becomes so my basic day is I get up and I have customer emails, support emails, I have programmers' emails. So I'm following up with programmers, devs, um, customers, and it seems like half my day is spent doing that. The other half is spent, you know, fixing things and working and tweaking products and and so forth. So yeah. So in so that I, case, like, so we take that, bad too, but, you know. so domaining is a, is a, a side income stream for yourself. And obviously you have the, the focus with the software world that you live in. So taking Gene's uh, opposite tack, where Gene is, is a full-time professional domainer has been for 15 years, five hours a day, and obviously making, you know, that, that kind of income that would, that, uh, that supports that, that lifestyle for yourself, where it is more of a casual thing. You're talking, check in here, five minutes, checking the list, you know, maybe pick this one up and doing that. What, what kind of income would you say over the last 12 months or so has come from that activity from domaining? Would it be 10 grand, 20 grand? Like what, you know? Yeah. No, well, yeah. I, well, you know, I can say, I can say about 10 grand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, like I said, it's not, it's not my focus. I like to build tools. If I, if I, you know, we are, I don't know if we want to talk about the tool we built, but obviously we had a great success with that this yeah. year. Uh, but as far as buying and selling domains uh, you know, I have a couple rentals. So, you know, we're talking five or five to 10 grand or so. Nice. It's still a nice side income though, isn't it? So it's, let's talk about the tool for a second. If I, if I really was devoted to it, if I wasn't so busy with my other projects and, and clients, I would, it would probably be 50 to hundred grand from that. Yeah. Nice. That's, that's awesome. I just want to throw one thing in too. Just one, one thing here. Even if somebody spent a half hour or one hour a day doing domaining the right way, there's lots of money just in that. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, even just, uh, I was talking to um, uh, someone earlier that was, that was saying about rentals. So they, they, they have that, that specific target where they find a company in a location and then they, they rent it out. And he was talking um, to the tune of, of five, six figures a month in monthly rental income, but right. time spent on a daily basis was between an hour and two. Like, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of, uh, you know, looking at the list, picking because he had that very specific um, model that he was chasing down. So yeah, I, I completely understand what you're saying. Guys, let's talk about the software just for a second. I'm going to put a link to the program underneath this video, but the program that you created, Meta Domainer, let, let's concentrate on that for a second. Gene, I'm going to ask you why you created it. Dan, I'm going to ask you about the techniques of it. So Gene, what was the kind of thinking behind the program Meta Domain? Well, one, the main reason is most domainers, they buy domains, they create an inventory, and they, they, the, the inventory sits in their, on their hard drive until they find prospects for them. And they say, yeah, someday I'll get around to building a site for it. Yeah. There had to be a better solution, and Dan came up with the solution. Uh, so that's why we teamed up. We have a system called MetaDomainer, which takes all of your domains, you just plug them in, and it creates websites almost instantly. Wow. And so the value add of that is huge. Like we were talking about just before, you can own a, a piece of real estate that's blank or right. you can put something on top of it and the value increases instant, right? So right. all those guys with domain inventory and let's buy a domain and, and, oh, let's get back to it sometime. And now I need to, you know, go to work or whatever with, with a system like MetaDomain, you can, you can go click and have that developed 
something that looks amazing has presence, the value goes from here to here, like straight away from a buy and sell point of view. Yeah. It literally takes seconds to build each website. So wow, it's, it's, that's so cool. That is, that is very, very cool. So Dan, um, the, the techniques behind it then as, as you're looking at creating this program so that people can install something amazing on a domain in a few, in a few seconds. Um, what do you think the, 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 the best way to do that is with using the platform? Well, the, the, we, we make it simple. For, first off, we use it on WordPress. So, so most people are familiar with WordPress. So essentially, mm -hmm. it's as simple as making a WordPress post, but you actually don't have to type in any content. You just make the post, choose a template, add in a couple of fields, and click on publish, and it's, and it's live. But I will say one of the other things that's, that's important on this, too, is that when people buy these domains, they have no idea if they're actually getting any traffic. So you have no yep. idea. I, I call it triaging your domains. So if you have a bunch of domains, you have 100 domains, you could actually take take an hour or two and you could actually make a unique site for all of them, but you'd also be able to get stats within 24 hours. You know, which ones actually are generating traffic. Wow. So that's the one, those are the ones you can focus on and you'll see, know which one of your domains are have. Now, value. Make I've got to point out, I've got very important. It's a WordPress, WordPress plugin, but you, it, the websites that you create are not WordPress based. They're HTML. Which so you right. just, you create the pages in WordPress, but they become HTML pages that you can put on any, any domain where you want. Which is amazing. And of course you get a past um, uh, WordPress I love because it's easy to work with and, and it's been designed that way. Um, but of course there's a lot of conflicts and updates and, you know, things with WordPress, whereas with HTML, um, you know, you don't have that security issues. You don't have the, the, the people hacking your sites and all that kind of stuff. And you can, as you said, Gene, you can drop those templates in on, on any on any website anywhere which is which is really really cool um what do you think guys like just as a gut feel gene i'm going to direct this question to you as a gut feel let's say we we register a, a let's have to assume that it's a reasonable domain not blah 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 whatever random but let's say that it's you know a product specific or business specific domain that we've been able to register for ten dollars what would you say from your experience the value increase of populating it with good looking pages and actual um, material using meta domain areas. What would you say we, we can jump from a, from a $10 registration to a value of what roughly just as a, as a starting point? That that's so hard to say because sure. every, every single domain name is a unique product. It's not like you can apply the same rules to every domain name. Yeah. So when you, when you put up a site, it may appeal to some, it may not appeal, but the point of building the sites is when you're selling a website, and people say, well, let me go check it out. You want them to be able to see something. It looks good. It looks good. And they, they can see that, okay, yeah, this is an actual thing that I can buy. When they, mm -hmm. when they do a lot of customer uh, prospects, when they just hear about a domain name, they don't really relate with what it can do. But when, yeah. they ha when there's a site on it, they say, okay, I understand what I can see it. Yeah, right. it makes sense. Like rather than going to a parking page that says, you know, XYZ is available for sale, you go, right. okay, well, that's cool. But if you go to that same site and it's got a banner in the top and colors down the side and it's got some content, you start to go, ah, oh, this yes. is where that kind of fits in the world. Yeah, nice. I like it. I like it. And um, from, a, from a flip point of view, Gene, since you created the Meta Domain program, have you sold a few domains that have been populated with meta domain content? You know, meta domain is so new that I haven't even had it. We've been working so hard on developing it. I you haven't had time to actually put it into effect myself. <laughs> I've built, I, I've built websites. I haven't, I haven't gone Something out and yet. marketed them yet. So yeah, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm just being perfectly honest. No, but, no, that's uh, good. I'm, 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 thr I'm thrilled okay, to hear that yeah. because it, it means that it's, you know, something that anybody can do and it's still brand new. It's not oversaturated right. yet, which is cool. Right. Come back well, and tell us some results, man. Once you get a couple of sales on your belt, that'd be interesting. Well, well on our Facebook group, we have a customers that have sold. Yes. Said, one guy was very excited. He's had the domain for a long time. Just put up a page and it sold. And, you know, so what was it? What, what did he sell it for, Dan? Did he, did he reveal it? Gene, do you remember that? There was a, was it, did he sell it was a monthly thing or he said it, it was, um, it was four times what he wanted or something like that. There were a couple of them. I think in the $400 range, $700 range. Wow. That's so yeah. cool, guys. That's so well, cool. He just bought it. I think he just bought it with Dame Stagger. But James, you know, Gene has tons of Dame Stagger testimonials, which is basically the same thing. He's right. getting yeah. tons of people that are turning around and selling these sites that they just bought for 10 bucks. Wow. Very, it's, very cool. It's all, once again, it's, it's stage, to me, it's like real estate staging. You know? Yeah. If you, yeah, it's a great way to look at it. You're changing the perception of value. Absolutely. So there's nothing on it. If it's a broken link, you know, it's not going to be valued. But if you see a nice site and you can envision your site there, and plus if they know they can actually just continue to use the site, 
then, you know, the, the, so one of the things that we're adding in the next update is we have a bunch of different local fields. So you can populate it with local information so that if you want to make a, a, uh, a Boston plumber site, like Gene mentioned, you could actually go in and populate it with some actual real, real Boston plumber stuff. Right. And then you send them a link saying, Hey, I made this site, you know, so you can get an example of it. And it's actually their information. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's so another, then, yeah, another so important, another, then, okay, F go ahead, finish up Dan. No, I've got another no, point. I'm just saying, so just, you know, so we're trying to add more things to help people sell and we'll, we'll begin to learn. Obviously there'll be a collective knowledge from different experiences and we'll, we'll integrate all of that knowledge into meta domain to try to improve the sales and so forth. But to so me, cool. it's, it's just about being able to make a site in seconds, being able to see how many, how much stats you have. And most importantly, you don't have to, you don't have to, you don't need extra WordPress uh, accounts. You don't need extra hosting accounts. And one thing I will learn you know, as a software developer and WordPress plugin developer, I see people and I used to meet these nice people and they're like, how much are you paying for hosting? Oh, $150 a month. You know, like what? How many <laughs> domains? Oh, I only have three and I have three different servers and I'm paying, you know, they have no idea what they're doing with hosting. They're spending way too much money. Mm. So meta domain, you don't need, you can, you can eliminate hosting accounts. You can eliminate WordPress installs. Super valuable. And it just reduces the stress. And, and, and so instantly you'll start saving money because you're not paying freelancers to make websites. You're not paying for hosting. You know? Beautiful. beautiful. I, I bought it as a customer. Like for me, it was a, an absolute no brainer. I've got an inventory of domains. And when I saw you guys release that product, I was like, yep, that's, that's me hundred percent. So, yeah. yeah, no, thanks. So I'll put the link underneath the video guys, go and go and grab it. If you, if you even have one, two, three, four, five domains that you've bought over your period of time, go and put this in. And as you know, the guys were saying from testimonials in the Facebook group, if you, if you have a thousand domains, if you don't, I don't know if you know that, but if you have a thousand domains, we actually have an import function. So you can just upload a spreadsheet. I and did not know that. I've, I've been doing it manually. So <laughs> that's a really good so you, just fill out, you fill out the spreadsheet with the domain name, a template name, a few keywords, and just Boom. hit upload and it'll oh. make, make a thousand pages in, in seconds. Oh, that's so cool. I love it. I have, I, to make one more, I have to make one more point. One of the reasons you want to develop uh, these quick websites on your domains is because if you have a portfolio of domains that are just sitting there doing nothing, but if you put a page on them, you can monetize those pages real quickly as well. Yeah. But if you link put a few links on each page. So they, th those pages, as simple as they are, they pay for the registrations of your domain names. And those, can those, um, uh, that monetization gene, this is something that I used to do a lot um, yeah. in, in, a, in a past life before I got distracted uh, and build, started building software for myself. Um, yeah. I used to create a, register a domain name and do exactly that and, and you know, have some keyword content behind there, but just have a couple of uh, AdSense ads even yeah. and um, you know, a ClickBank link here or there, or a, a product or, a, or whatever, or affiliate Amazon product. And we're not talking a lot of money because it was not something that I was marketing, but I still remember logging into my AdSense account and I had the domain, it was getting some passive traffic and it was, you know, it was making four five, six $6 a month. That's nothing. But when the domain costs you $9 a year, suddenly it's completely yeah. paid for. Dan, that's, that's a, so that's a great point, Gene. Dan, you were saying that one of the ones that you had with the bootstrapping, you've monetized it just by literally um, capturing the traffic and having a whole bunch of links on there. Is that making yeah. you some money? Not a lot. And I'll, and I'll tell why, because most guys just use it as a quick redirect. Yeah, so sure. I've made, I, I, I will say that the main, here's the, the like I said, the beautiful thing, I've, it's, it's, I pay eight bucks a year for a domain. And so it's an $8 investment and maybe an hour of my time initially, originally started. I always say, you know, if I make a dollar a month, yeah, <laughs> I'm making, you're in profit. I'm making 50% on my money. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Exactly. It was without <laughs> doing like, any work. And my first, my first, my first boss uh, that I ever had said to me, you never go broke if you're making a profit. And I was like, yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> so to me, I'm just, if you can make a dollar a month in the domaining business, you're, you're, that's a, that's a model for a million to be a billionaire. You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So if, you're, you're, if, you, month, if you go and up by a dollar every time you do it, then how many times you want to do it? Well, then that's up to you. Yeah, so, so that's a great point as well, guys. Like for anybody that's sitting on a domain collection, I saw a domain, I bought it all those years ago. It's just been sitting there. I can't let it go. So I keep renewing it. Pop, pop a page on it, monetize it, make a dollar, make five, make 10. Why not? It's sitting there anyway. Yeah. If you can make one affiliate sale per month per domain, that yeah. is Damn. Huge burn. Huge Absolutely. Burn. You know what? Like following that through, Dan, and following you know the whole concept behind me creating this software program for buying domains is exactly that. If you can make one affiliate sale per domain per month, 
Like, yeah. come and buy some more. Like, go and yeah. find more domains, put the meta domain system on it, get some pages up there and make another one, you know, and do that while you're eating your cereal yeah. in, the, in the morning. And, and, like, any, and like, like any business, there might be 100 domains you don't make any sales, but there might be five domains that you make 20 sales on. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So it's all just law of averages. And, and, come and, and get yeah. more inventory. Come and put the meta domain system on and, and start making some money. Guys, yeah. um. You have an opportunity right now, uh, uh, Dan. You were saying that you would buy slowly and build them out. Gene, you were, you know, look for specific business niches, etc. Somebody gives you five hundred bucks right now and says, "Turn this into a thousand with domain names." Would you go and buy a higher value one? Would you buy fifty, ten dollar ones? Like, what would you be? What would be your five hundred to a thousand dollar strategy, Gene? You go, and then we'll we'll jump back to you, Dan. Are you saying if somebody gave me the five hundred to a thousand to spend? Yeah. So here's five hundred dollars cash. Right. Mm -hmm. Your challenge is, I don't know, let's pick a time frame. You've got 14 days to turn that into a thousand. What mm -hmm. do you do? Um, I would probably buy an existing domain name that has a website on it uh, for that $500. Mm -hmm. Something that I know would have a turnaround of several thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. So in I mean, the same thing, you're talking businesses and niches and that kind of stuff? Yeah, most likely because that's where it's easiest to find prospects to buy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if, you, if that website had anything on it already, would you spend that time cleaning it up, Dan, uh, uh, Gene, or would you flip it straight away? I would look for a site that's already done and I don't have to do anything to it. Yeah. I may have to tweak it, you know, change an email address or something like that, but I wouldn't put time into it. I would just buy it and re resell it. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. What about yourself, Dan? That's a 14-day challenge. He's $500. You got 14 yes. days to turn that into 1,000 yeah. with domain names. How would you do it? Yeah, so I'd probably do it a little, a little differently, actually. I, so I, there's a couple of different places that, that sell good domains cheap um, in the sense that um, now all of a sudden I can't think of the name of it, justdrop.com. Yeah. It's good names. They're like $60. They're all like $60, $70. Really good names. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So I would probably buy, look for that list, and I'd probably buy a couple of the, two or three of the best ones. And then I'd go back to the expired domain list, and I'd probably, and I'd probably use the rest of the money to, to look for domains there. And then I'd instantly, I'd instantly list those ones for sale and I would post it in a few different places. You know, every, well, you know, I do a portfolio. Here's my portfolio for sale. Here are the prices you can get, you know, if you buy these 10, you get them all together as, as, as a group price, that kind of thing. But I would look for a couple of ones that were really good names, build them out. I'd look for business names and I do the thing where I contact some business owners and I try to get them to buy them. What I, what I love about this business is there are so many different ways you can make money with domain names. And one of the, like getting back to one of your original questions, you were saying what's a mistake that a lot of beginners make. And that is they try to, they, they register a domain name, they try to sell it for $5,000, $10,000. Start small, you know, mm, buy, mm, register mm. a domain name and flip it for $100. Buy yeah. another one, flip it for $100. Get the experience because when you get that experience and sell, 10 domain names at a hundred bucks a piece. Now you know you're, what you're doing and what you're looking for. Now I mean, you can go and, and, and approach the bigger numbers. Yeah. By that same token, if you had the list like this, this guy's, his business model is he, he picks up these domains that are expired, they're good domains. He turns around and lists them for sale for 69 bucks. He doesn't get greedy, mm. but he has a big mailing list right. and he mails it out. And so can he sell, does he sell 10 domains a day? Probably. All yeah, making 60 at a piece. Yeah. So he has a PayPal link, he has a list and essentially he, buys a domain, puts it on his list the next day, goes out, there's a direct PayPal link. He makes $50, $60 profit per sale. He sells 10 a day. Basically, it's, it's mostly automa automated. He probably has a freelancer to run it for him. You know, that's 15 grand a month. Yeah. You know, the, business, the business models are endless with, with these yeah. kind of strategies, aren't they? So, and, and so very so cool. The names have to appeal to the right people. And, you know, the idea is just get your, if you can get the names, eyeballs on those names, they'll, they'll sell. Guys, I'm so grateful for your time. Thank you so much for the opportunity to come and, and bounce back and forth with you. Like what, what we can take away from this is that either full-time or part-time, five minutes a day or five hours a day, there's money in domain names, especially with the system that you guys have created, the meta domain, and again, the links under the video. You guys can, you can buy good inventory. Use some of the techniques that, that Gene and Dan were talking about. Make sure you're picking a specific vertical. Make sure you know exactly what you're going to do with it. Don't just buy it because it sounds good. Pick something that has some research behind it. Pick something that you know what you're going to do with it. Stick with the dot coms. Put the meta domain system in it. Build out a content and then you know make those flips for small incremental profits. Take the big wins when they come. You know the twenty four thousand dollars in a couple of weeks. You have to be doing the small transactions for the big ones to fall into play. Uh, and again, guys, thank you so much, very very much for your time. This very is good. like a, 
an hour for me that's super well spent. Uh, I really appreciate the efforts there. And I look forward to hearing about some of these other flips that you've got coming through, Jen. Really appreciate it. Right. Okay. Thanks, well. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, guys.